Welcome back, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and in this video, I'm reviewing the Mercedes-Benz EQS 580. So listen up, the EQ platform is Mercedes's all new and all electric model lineup. Their first attempt is with the EQS, and further models will succeed it, like the EQE and the EQA and the EQB and EQG and all the other gas-powered versions of Mercedes's lineup. But when I saw the EQS in person, I couldn't help myself but to think, how is this similar to an S580, S-Class? How are they different? What are they like? I guess we're gonna find out in this review of the Mercedes-Benz EQS forward-thinking, futuristic looking, the most aerodynamic, very underrated feature on both of these cars. S-Class interior, absolutely exquisite. EQS wow factor is the hyper screen. Three screen, 56 inches, one piece glass. All right, so let's start the review off by talking about the exterior design. And with the EQS, you've got something very forward-thinking, very futuristic-looking, and aerodynamics-driven. In fact, the EQS is the most aerodynamic car available for sale today. Then you cross over into the S-Class and you've got something a little bit more traditional. It looks like what car designs have been looking like for the past several decades now. But when you see them in person, you would think, oh man, the EQS so much further towers over the S-Class. And granted, both of these cars are very large and long cars. But when you look at them on paper, dimensionally, they're practically the same. You've got an inch here and an inch there, but they're the same size. All right, so then what are the differences? And they come down to some of the intricate designs and they're mainly dictated based off of the platform. This is an EV and this is obviously gas powered. So let's start it off. The first thing is the grill. So in EV cars, you don't have a grill because there is no cooling needed. There's no engine up here. So in the EQS, you have this beautiful and very futuristic looking grill. It's glass and you've got a big Mercedes logo here in the center, followed by these little TriStar logos right next to it all around the grill. Very nice looking. The headlights are the new a digital light and these act as projectors. They're similar to the laser light in the S580 but obviously a little different technology but otherwise in the S-Class you've got the big grill here there's an engine behind it that needs cooling so you've got openings but for the most part the lower grill here the bumper these are non-AMG package cars so the bumper here is mostly the same. Now one thing you are going to get in the S-Class that you are not in the EQS is the traditional Mercedes-Benz logo here that sits on top of your head. Now this is one of the cooler things I remember as a kid on older Mercedes. Uh, all the Mercedes lineup had this TriStar logo sitting on top of the hood. Now unfortunately the S-Class is the only car that gets this and you're not going to get it in the EQS either. So if you're a traditionalist there or if you want to hold on to that nostalgia, S-Class. Now one of the biggest things that contributes to the visual differences between these two cars is the roofline, the silhouette from the side. Here you can see in the EQS it's very flowing, very aerodynamic, circular. People on the internet call it a jelly bean looking car but in my opinion when you see it in person I think it's very nicely done it's very elegant tasteful for aerodynamic forward-thinking design it's really difficult to make these cars look stylish and I think Mercedes has done a beautiful job with this roofline and the way it flows into the trunk it reminds me of the CLS and the Taycan really nicely done all right so now the rear end a couple visual differences here and 
a functional difference with the trunk. So first things first, the taillight design in the EQS is a light bar style. It's all LED, very futuristic, very 3D looking. And in the S-Class, not to stay too far behind, very nice looking, very modern. But in the EQS, it just takes it to another level as far as the design goes. Overall, the rear end is again very circular, very aerodynamic in the EQS compared to the S-Class. No emission, so obviously no tailpipe. In the S-Class, you do get the fake tips with the exhaust pipes. But now, the trunk. So there's a functional difference between these two cars. Because of the roof line here in the EQS, this is actually a hatchback design. So it's a sport back, while in the S-Class, you have a more traditional trunk. So the way you open the trunk, there's multiple ways. There is the kicking motion. You can open it using the key. There's obviously comfort access. You push this big Mercedes logo and opens the trunk. And you'll see here the visual differences between the S-Class and the EQS. In the EQS, you have this massive trunk. It's actually bigger than in the S-Class. You have 22 cubic feet of space and you can fold the trunk to extend it up to 63 cubic feet of space. Again, more than the S-Class, but the difference here is this is a pass-through. You can open it up and put stuff in from the front and put stuff in from the back and have it pass through. While in the S-Class, it's a traditional trunk. You open it up and you cannot pass anything through. The seats are fixed, so it's a little limited in the S-Class. So if you're somebody who wants to carry around stuff and travel with stuff, the EQS is probably going to be better for you. All right, so now let's talk about the wheels and a very underrated feature that's available on both of these cars. So starting off with the wheels, the EQS has an optional 22 inch wheel. It's rather perplexing, but 22 inches, it suits the design and the overall proportions of the EQS, so it suits it really nicely. Now in the S-Class, you have a 20 inch wheel and in both of these cars, the wheels vary depending if you want AMG or non-AMG, whatever, you have options basically. Now the underrated feature is rear wheel steering. Both of these cars have the availability for up to 10 degrees of rear wheel steering. In the EQS, you can actually option it in even after you buy the car if it didn't come with it from the manufacturer. It's an over-the-air update, it's just a software switch. In the, in the S-Class, you have to option it in from the factory. Now, what is rear wheel steering? Rear wheel steering is basically the rear wheels turn opposite to the direction the front wheels are turned. So basically if you turn left in the front, your front wheels are turning left, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction and what this effectively does is it increases your turning radius. Now this is immensely helpful because both of these cars are rather large and maneuvering them in tight spaces can become somewhat of a challenge. I know I've got both of these cars, I had limited space to move them around and in my practical experience the rear wheel steering helps immensely when you're getting cars of this size around in such small spaces. All right, so the most obvious difference between an S-Class and an EQS is that an S-Class has an internal combustion engine. It also has a hood that you can lift and use and see your engine. But in the EQS, no such thing. Mercedes doesn't allow you to open the front compartment. That's only for specialized Mercedes technicians. And you have to bring it in for service, they'll take care of it. But if you wanted to fill in some washer fluid and stuff, they give you a little compartment on the driver's side that flips open, put stuff in there, close it. But as far as a hood goes, can't use it in an EQS. But what the EQS 580 does have is 107.5 kilowatt an hour battery. This got two motors, one in the rear, one in the front for a combined output of 516 horsepower and 631 pounds feet of torque. Now, if you're doing the math, this has 20 additional horsepower and 115 pounds feet of torque in addition to what the V8 S580 has. Now this is a single speed transmission. This has a, the S580 has a, a nine speed automatic. I shouldn't say S580 because they're both S580. The S-Class has a nine speed automatic and they're all wheel drive driven. Now the performance, zero to 60 time, the S, the EQS is faster than the S580 and this gets it in 4.1 seconds. The S-Class 4.4 seconds. Now this is absolutely remarkable and let me tell you why. The 
EQS weighs 5,888 pounds, so almost three tons in this EQS. But the S-Class weighs 5,000 pounds. So in a car that weighs almost 900 pounds more, you have better performance and thus the magic of EV and basically torque from a standstill. And combined with the all-wheel drive, better performance all around. All right, so now I'm by the charging port, so let's talk about the battery, the range, and the charging. So the battery is laid on the floor of the car between the wheels, uh, giving the EQS a 50-50 weight distribution, so good balance for such a big car. Now as far as the batteries go, Mercedes guarantees them for 10 years or 155,000 miles, so a decent guarantee or warranty, or whatever you want to call it. Now the range, the EPA estimates the S580 or the EQS 580 range at 345 miles. Now several reviews out there have been able to squeeze a little bit more out of a full battery. So it's somewhat of a conservative uh, estimate by the EPA. Now, as far as you use your battery, now you want to charge it. So Mercedes got you covered there. They have DC fast charging using CCS connectors and they say charging from 10% up to 80% will take you roughly 25 to 30 minutes. Now, if you want to use the traditional AC outlet, it will take you almost 12 hours going from 10 to 100%. Now, as far as uh, charging capabilities, there's Electrify America. Mercedes gives you two years of complimentary fast charging with your S580. And then there afterwards, you can manage it using your Mercedes app. So it's quite convenient. Mercedes is covering your chargings for any of the juice for the lack of a better term that drives it as long as you live close to a fast charging station all right so now the interior portion of the review and i am sitting in the s class the s580 and i wanted to sit in here first and then go and sit in the eqs 580 right afterwards in a short period of time to give you that one-to-one -one immediate comparison on how they feel now i'm not going to go into much detail about the S-Class interior. I've done a full review of the S580. I'll put a link to that in the description below. You can check it out after you watch this video. But I can tell you that the S-Class interior is absolutely exquisite. It is one of the most comfortable, most elegantly designed, classical, and still technology-oriented interiors I've experienced in quite a long time. Now, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it, to be honest with you. So now let me jump into the EQS 580 and give you that direct one-to-one -one comparison and point out some of the things that differ between them. All right, so I immediately hopped into the EQS and prior to doing this, I was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what are the immediate differences that you will feel when you sit in the S-Class versus when you sit in the S580. And first things first, it feels like you sit much higher in this car. The roof is much closer to me than it is in the S-Class. Now, I didn't really hear this from other reviewers, but I, could, I would imagine that if you are taller than maybe six feet, you're probably going to have some trouble sitting in this car now i do have the seat adjusted all the way down uh, to its lowest setting and i still feel this way i'm 510 so that's the first thing uh, the root the uh, windshield is actually much more slanted you immediately notice that uh, and then as far as interior quality in the s580 you've got leather all over the place and it's true like leather feeling leather for the lack of a better term there's Napa leather in there. There is leather in here as well, but the dashboard and then some of the door trim and it's covered and then actually in the center section as well, it's covered in this different feeling material. It doesn't feel cheap uh, or it doesn't look cheap, uh, but it just is different. And to the eye, you immediately notice it when you see it. It's a definite difference. Now, the other item that is absolutely wow factor or is the wow factor in the EQS is the hyperscreen. Now, because this is an S580, you get hyperscreen as standard. And what hyperscreen is, there are three screens in this car that is covered with 56 inches of one piece glass. Let me repeat that. 
56 inches of glass cover three screens. So there's uh, one screen for the driver in front of you. So your instrument cluster, your gauges, that's a 12.3 inch screen. You have a screen in the center section. That is a 17.7 inch screen for your infotainment in the S580, the S class. It's a 12.8 inch screen. So it's almost five inches larger. And then on the driver, I mean, on the passenger side, this is the vast difference between the two interiors. And this is actually the first thing you notice before anything else is the passenger screen. So another 12.3 inch screen there. And I'll give you some more details as I jump into the, uh, as I jump into the details of the interior for the EQS. So those are kind of the immediate things you will notice when you sit in here compared to an S580. The roof line is, a little low and somewhat concerning. I don't know if this is normal or not, but a little low. The interior quality, not the quality, the quality is still excellent. The material is a little different as opposed to all uh, Napa leather in there or in there as in, in the S580 that's right there. And then the screens. And then the screens is probably one of the things that will just sell the EQS by itself. There isn't anything else out there that's similar. Maybe you can say the Jeep Wagoneer but uh, this is quite mouth-watering when you see it in person, definitely pops. So now let's jump into the details of the EQS 580. So the steering wheel is absolutely the same as what you get in the S-Class. It's got a great touch controls. They give you good feedback. They're not just like a hard button. They actually give you feedback, the haptic feedback. You push on it and it gives you a confirmation that you've selected something. And the uh, interesting thing about this, the difference here is the paddle shifters. The paddle shifters in the EQS adjust your brake regeneration as opposed to in the S-Class, they are true paddle shifters for your transmission, but because you only have one speed in here, you don't need to shift anything, and that adjusts your brake regen. Now, the gauge cluster is actually very similar to what you get in the S-Class. As a matter of fact, the rest of the stuff, the infotainment, all of that stuff, the interface, it's the latest MBUX in both cars, and they're actually quite, quite similar. The head-up display, the gauges, the infotainment software, the way you navigate around it, the capabilities, are pretty much identical. Now the gauge cluster is very easy to read. You do have multiple um, visual aspects to it. You can change the way they look. You can change the way the head-up display works. The head-up display is excellent, very, very good. Now coming over into the infotainment screen, like I said, it's mostly the same. Uh, you do have the very simple, easy to use MBUX system. I experienced that in the S-Class. You just jump in and it's so easy to use uh, it compared to the command system that was in the prior generation of the Mercedes. You just jump in, all the graphics, everything is beautifully laid out and it's a really easy system to use. Now, I do have uh, one complaint about the EQS and it's right here in this center section. So the center section has uh, a multitude of uh, buttons that control the settings within the car. So you have a traditional start stop button and then you've got the dynamic uh, mode selector and EQ and all of this stuff. I'm not complaining much so about what's on this or the function out of it rather than the way it's placed. I constantly found myself hitting some of the buttons when I'm making adjustments on the infotainment screen or when I'm resting my arm. It, it's somewhat in the way. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but it is something that you notice. And secondly, it is mounted in a weird spot, actually. When I've got my arm resting in a comfortable position, it's not directly laying on top of it so I can make the adjustments. It's just kind of sitting uh, right beneath my wrist. Now, another difference that I noticed in the EQS that's a plus is there's a center storage section here right underneath the uh, infotainment and this center console area, much bigger area here compared to the S-Class. Now, let me go on into the passenger side and show you what that screen is like. All right, so now I'm on the passenger seat and this is such a dramatic difference than any other car you're gonna sit in. You come sit in as a passenger. First and foremost, it's a very comfortable seating position, plenty of leg room, uh, no concern to be honest. But then when you look up and you've got this screen, this 12.3 inch beautiful LED screen, all of these screens are LED by the way, um, beautiful screen sitting in front of you and you have the ability for like this really cool looking screensaver. It's got the Vision X concept 
really, really cool. It looks so much better at night, even though the LEDs are bright enough to make it very uh, visually uh, pleasing during the day. So when you come sit in here, it detects that there's somebody here. So you push the power button and it's basically the same interface as what you get in the infotainment and you have the ability to control all the same things you can listen to your separate audio you can watch movies on here if you wanted to but you have the ability to type in navigation directions which is extremely useful because Here's one practical situation. So if you're driving, you have somebody sitting in the passenger seat, even though you have voice control and doing all this stuff while you drive and you've got all these shortcuts on the, on the steering wheel, it's always handy to have another co-pilot with you. So you can have your co-pilot type in your navigation, wherever you want to go, type it in, blah, blah, blah. Click go and you're just going. You don't have to worry about fiddling around. Co-pilot is important and having this functionality with your co-pilot is just an additional benefit. But otherwise, it's just such a wow factor. You have all these other things in here. You can go into EQ, see everything that you would see in the infotainment screen. It's so different when you sit in the passenger seat and you've got something like this in front of you. Uh, I'm just interested to see what happens five, 10 years from now when literally, I don't know where you go from here. The entire, the entire dashboard is a screen at this point for the driver, the infotainment, and the passenger. So now let's jump into the back seat. Let me show you what it's like back there. All right, so now the back seat of the EQS, and you can get this car in the executive pack where you've got a two plus two seating arrangement and obviously this bench seat as well. Now, as far as the space goes, there is plenty of space in here. I do not feel a physical shortage compared to the S-Class. I would say they are equal. As far as the width goes, I would say two adult-sized individuals like me would fit in here. Three would probably be a squeeze, same thing in the S-Class. Now, uh, otherwise, the difference that I feel, I feel like the seats back here are a little harder. The cushioning in the back seat here is a little harder for some reason. And I don't know why. And of course, again, I feel like I am sitting much higher in the EQS uh, than in the S-Class. And of course, it's further exacerbated because I'm, the EQS has a sloping roof compared to the S-Class. And it just feels like I'm sitting way too close to the roof. I'm not touching it, but I do feel it here in my peripheral up in my uh, eyes. Um, now, one thing this does have, it does have a standard panoramic roof, so I do get glass up uh, back here, and I do get glass in the front, so it's always nice to look out of. But my biggest complaint back here is the roof line. The roof line feels too low for my taste, and uh, I don't know if, again, if you're, a, if you're a taller person and you're sitting either in the driver's seat, if you're just sitting in here and you're a taller person, you might have some issues. So make sure you sit in it before you buy it. Now, that's basically the interior. So let's go to the driving portion while I will drive the S580 first, and then I will jump into the EQS 580. All right, so now the driving portion of the review, and as promised, I am in the S-Class, the S580. I'm not gonna go too much into detail about visibility and all that stuff. I'm just gonna drive and give you a driving comparison of the two. So let's go ahead and turn the engine on, start stop button, and the startup of the S-Class is extremely, extremely quiet. Even though this is a V8, there is no loud burbly exhaust, none of that stuff. So now, let's go ahead and get going. So I put it in drive, and you can immediately tell this one has a a, a Napa leather steering wheel, which is optional, and man, is it so smooth. Everything about this car is just smooth. It is extremely effortless. It, it's probably one of the most effortless driving experiences that you can get in an automobile. It serves its purpose so well as being a luxury car. It is truly remarkable how good the S-Class is, and rightfully so, because the S-Class is a extremely significant car in the automotive industry. A lot of technology and a lot of refinement and a lot of, um, I guess, milestones are reached with the S-Class and then other cars follow. Not to bring other cars down, but 
Mercedes has been making the S-Class for a very long time and Mercedes as a manufacturer has been making cars for a very long time. So how does the S-Class feel? It's extremely pillowy, I'm in comfort mode and I have a lot of experience with the 7 Series, the current generation 7 Series and this is, it's seriously magic carpet ride multiplied by 10. It's so effortless to drive the ride and the compliance over bumps and the way the seat and the suspension just soak up everything is truly mar remarkable. Now, one other thing about this S580 is that it has a V8 and it's almost 500 horsepower. So let's see as far as a straight line goes because that EQS has more power and it's electronically driven. So I wanna see what the difference is in acceleration. So let's get a straight line here real quick. And it moves, it moves. The brake pedal, ugh, quite squishy. <laughs> Not really performance levels, but once it goes, you can definitely feel the weight. But again, even when you're driving fast, this is a very, very smooth car. Now let's jump into the EQS 580. All right, so now inside the EQS 580 in a much brighter and uh, lighter interior. Of course, this has somewhat of a beige whitish interior, so it does seem much more airy in here. Uh, the key for the S5, uh, the E. EQS 580, I keep saying S580, is the same key as what you get in the S-Class, that's what it looks like, actually a very nice key, I like the way Mercedes is doing this key, it has a nice weight to it and it's mostly metal. As far as visibility goes, great out the front, I don't have any issues seeing around me at all, I have great cameras, 360 degree view behind me, in front of me, to the sides, Mercedes does good camera technology, so I don't have any issues with visibility. As far as the price goes, so if you were to get an EQS 580, it's actually $2,000 more expensive base for base than the S580 S-Class. Now it's a different story if you were to drop down a level, there's the lower level of the S-Class, the S500, and the lower level of the EQS, the EQS 450 Plus. Now there, there is a drastic price difference. If you go EQS 450 Plus, it's about $8,000 difference compared to a S500. So if you wanted to say, oh, an EQS is $8,000 cheaper than an S-Class, you could technically argue that and I'll leave that up to you to determine what's best for you. Pricing is very subjective and everybody's budget is different. Now, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and go for a drive. It's actually on, but you would never know that. So let's go seat belt on and put it in D and let's go. So First things first, I remember when I started the S5, S580 review, I, just, I said the steering wheel leather is soft. The um, S580 steering wheel leather feels softer than this. I don't know if it's because that one had Napa leather on it and this one doesn't, but nonetheless, that one has a softer steering wheel if that's of importance to you. So first things first, that's the touchy feel uh, difference. I can tell you right off the bat. Now. Let's go, I'm in comfort mode. I'm gonna stay in comfort mode um, and then I'm gonna get, hammer it for a second and then I'll put that in sport mode. But in comfort mode, I can tell you that the S-Class is more comfortable than the EQS 580. And I'm actually surprised because there is a, a difference. You can definitely feel it. The S580 is much more of a pillowy ride it sucks up the bumps much, much effortlessly than this car does. This car, by all means, it's not a rough car. If you were to drive this car without driving the S-Class, you would say, wow, this is one of the smoothest cars I've ever driven. So this is not a rough car. It is definitely a smooth riding car. But when you drive this back to back with the S-Class, you can certainly feel the difference between the two as far as engagement, smoothness, the way it bumps, uh, I mean soaks up the bumps. The S-Class is much, much better. And I'm talking apples to apples. I was in comfort mode there and I'm in comfort mode here. 
Now, as far as the speed goes to compare, let's do that really quickly. Let me put it in sport mode. And I'm moving at this point, so let me just gas it. And there's the big difference. It just, with EVs, you just fly away compared to the S-Class. In the S-Class, the engine has to spool up, the transmission has to downshift, all this stuff. You got single speed here, you just mash it and it goes. And one thing I noticed, it gets up to 100% of the power very quickly, especially when you're moving. So as far as the speed goes, this definitely feels faster than the S-Class, uh, both in initial acceleration and uh, once you've gotten going, it does feel pretty nice as far as the sensation of speed goes and you obviously get that torque from zero you snap your head back in the s580 in the eqs 580 now some of the things that are independent that don't exist in the uh, the s580 are the brake regen so like i said you adjust the brake regen using the paddle shifters so i am going to go into normal recuperation and i think it is tuned very nicely uh, it's not too aggressive. Now, I know in the Tesla Model S Plaid that I drove, I felt like initially that was way too aggressive. The Mustang Mach-E is also tuned very well. Put it in strong uh, recuperation. It does get some getting used to. You have to uh, modulate the throttle to get a, a nice smooth ride or else you're just going to keep doing this like the car is braking for you. Otherwise, the technology in this car is absolutely amazing. The screens when you're driving around are great. The driver aids are good. Now remember, the EQS 580 is on a completely different platform than the S-Class. Um, people think that it's shared. It's not. This is completely built ground up from uh, on its own. So to be, to be honest with you, I'm not really surprised that this isn't as smooth or as comfortable as an S-Class because they're on completely different platforms, completely different chassis, different tuning. All of that stuff is different. Yes, this has air suspension, but nonetheless, that should, um, I guess, set your expectations with this car. But overall, considering that this car and the S580 are the same price practice well this is more expensive if you go 580 to 580 honestly guys if you are really into the whole ev thing and the selling point of course are the screens if you really like the screens if you really like the tech if you like the way it looks then you're just going to choose this but i like the way the s-class drives better the S-Class is so much better as far as smoothness and comfort, and I think it achieves luxury, smoothness, comfort much better. This achieves uh, forward thinking, uh, revolution, uh, technology better than the S-Class. If you have any other questions, please send me a comment down below or message me on Instagram. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time. Drive steady.